Today I receive all of God's love for me. Today I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today I open myself to God's word. So I become more like Jesus every day. Today I proclaim that I'm God's beloved. I'm God's servant. I'm God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. message for talk for today is this trust his generosity whom among you here have already eaten in a buffet probably in a hotel or in a restaurant and as you know if you're in a buffet there are certain items that are in demand it could be the steak it could be the lechon in the Japanese section it could be the salmon sashimi and my wife and I we love salmon sashimi so one particular time we were eating at this buffet, we knew that this item was in demand, so we lined up already because it was freshly refilled, like what you see in the photo. So we were, I was online, and I was the fourth one in the line. So when the third person was already getting the salmon sashimi, I noticed the person was kind of excited. He was taking everything. And I was saying to myself, we love salmon sashimi. Imagine me already excited while waiting to, to, to take my turn. I was already mixing my soy sauce with wasabi on the side and a little calamansi, you know. And when it's my turn, there was no more salmon sashimi. And I became furious. I hated that person before me. How dare that person? My God, can you say that? My God. He did, she, he did not even leave some for me. Pwede naman siyang umikot, bumalik, di ba? Magla-refill naman yan. Why am I sharing that? Because I believe that I'm hungry, no? Why am I sharing that? It's because I believe that life, God designed life in abundance. There are blessings all around. But sometimes scarcity happens. And scarcity is mostly man-made. Some others grab. Some others take advantage. Some others don't allow you to receive the blessing that you have. Has it happened to you in real life? In a buffet? Or probably not in the buffet. Maybe in, in your office, credit was taken away from you. You did all the work and someone took credit. But God is reminding you today that there's no scarcity. His supply will never run out. Amen? Amen. Amen. Because I think that's the problem with people today. Even if there is abundance everywhere, people only see scarcity. So they scheme, struggle, and squabble constantly. They grab. And you know what? Today, we will learn that thinking in scarcity creates enemies. When you see scarcity, the next time I'm in a buffet, even if there's someone behind me, I'll get everything. Because... I want my share. That's scarcity thinking. 
And when others do that to you, that's scarcity thinking also. And you create enemies. Enemies that weren't, that must not be there in the first place if you had the right mindset of abundance. And today we will learn from Jesus. God will teach us today how to handle our enemies. So we're reading a passage today from Matthew chapter 5, verse 43 to 48. Can you read with me? You have heard that the law says, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. In that way, you will be acting as true children of your Father in heaven. For He gives His sunlight to both the evil and good. And He sends rain on the just and unjust alike. Love your enemies. I know some of you are already saying, Brother JB, can we skip that part? Can we skip to the good part? But we must follow it. Let's continue. Jesus further on says, If you only love, if you love only those who love you, what reward is there for that? Even corrupt tax collectors do that much. If you are kind only to your friends, how are you different from anyone else? Even pagans do that. But you are to be perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. It's a tough call. Hirap, no? Lord, pwede bang love those who are lovely na lang? Pwede bang ignore the enemies na lang? Para may peace of mind ako. Bakit love them ba? But we must do that. God is inviting you to do that today. And later on, you will know why in our talk. Are you excited? Can you put your hands in your hearts? Let's pray. Jesus, teach me to trust in your goodness. Even when things seem unfair, you are bigger. You are in control. And most of all, you love me. Amen. We have so many practical lessons in the passage that we will read today. But before we do that, can I indulge you on something? Can we Bible nerd a little bit? I know you've been enjoying because this has been our journey in the feast now. We're going deeper. At gusto kong palakpakan nyo yung mga sarili nyo. Because if you have been here since January up to now, we have already completed the five books of the Torah. We journeyed through that the entire year. That's why I'm excited because the context of the passage we are reading is very rich. Let's dig deeper a little bit of, the, of everything so that you'll enjoy and appreciate it further. And by the way, we have a Bible Nerds podcast. If you're not listening to it, if you want deeper knowledge about the, Bi- about the Bible, go listen to it. Find it on Spotify. Nandun po sila Bene, si Tisha, si Mon, si Brother Mike Vinas, and Brother Bo. So they are actually writing the talks now based on a deep understanding of the Bible. Can we give a clap offering for them for what they're doing? Because they are, they are blessing us, me included. My faith has deepened when we go that when we did that deep dive in the Torah. So let's go. Let's, let's Bible nerd a little bit. The passage that we read is part of the Sermon of the Mount of Jesus. You know the Sermon of the Mount? It's the first official preaching of Jesus after the temptation in the desert. The desert experience was preparing him to preach 2000 in the beginning of his ministry. So, ang isang ina-address ni Jesus in the Sermon of the Mount was the way that the Jews were misinterpreting the teachings. Can you say that? Misinterpretation. Diba? Tayong may mga asawa, ayaw natin yan. Kasi pag may misinterpretation, awa yan. Gulo yan. Ganun yung nangyayari. The people were misinterpreting the Torah. So here in Matthew 5, you would notice that several times, Jesus was saying the word, like we heard earlier, you have heard that the law says. Diba? He was quoting and hyperlinking old scripture from the Torah, and then saying something revolutionary after. Because he was trying to change that, hey, this was the original teaching, but you're understanding it in a different way. One example is murder. He, he told, Jesus, told, Jesus told them, you have heard that it is, you must not commit murder. It's part of the Ten Commandments. But I say to you, if you are angry at someone, say angry. Look at the person beside you, say angry. If you're angry at that person, that is tantamount to murder. Jesus was telling that. Another is adultery. He was saying that 
If you are committing lustful thoughts, if you think lustfully of another woman, then it's equal to adultery in your mind. So he was revolutionizing the way that the verses were understood. So at ang intro niya doon sa Sermon on the Mount was this, Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. It says there, Don't misunderstand why I have come. I did not come to abolish the law of Moses or the writings of the prophets. No, I came to accomplish their purpose. Can you say that word with me? Purpose. In another term, I like what they use. They say essence. Can you say essence? Diba? Jesus was trying to teach that more than the letter of the law, what is the essence? What is the true meaning? So kung babalikan natin yung love your neighbor and hate your enemy, sinabi niya kanina. Have you heard love your neighbor before? Yes? Have you heard hate your enemy before? Pag tiningnan niyo po, ito yung medyo hindi familiar. Because yung hate your enemy was not in Leviticus. But why did Jesus say that? Diba? You, heard, you have heard that the law says, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18, this is the original verse. It says there, do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against anyone among your people, but love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Diba? Walang hate your enemy. But Jesus was trying to tell the people, hey, because you have been telling each other, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. We have learned that in talk two, the enemy is trying to change the definition of what is good and bad. So for the, for the Jews, they think that because the Leviticus says that anyone among your people, love your neighbor. So therefore, if they are not part of our people, we are not required to love them. That's why they did and go and went into wars with others. Because they believe that God is okay with that. But Jesus was trying to change that thinking. That loving your neighbors includes others, even those not part of your circle. Can you look at the person beside you? Sabi mo sa kanya, mamahalin natin sila. Kahit din natin sila type. Kahit inis tayo sa kanila. Kahit din natin sila feel. Kahit naiirita tayo sa kanila. ba? And Jesus continues on to saying, but I say, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. In that way, you will be acting as true children of your Father in heaven. This is what Jesus is te teaching the right way. Do not exclude them. Do not ignore them. Because it's easy to say, pray for your enemies. I could easily say, yes, Lord, I will pray for their demise. I want them to suffer. Because sometimes you really feel that. I don't feel that they deserve prayers of blessings. And I love it that after that, Jesus says, for he gives his sunlight to both the evil and the good. And he sends rain on the just and the unjust alike. Notice something. Have you noticed something? Even in our talk one, when Jesus wants to illustrate about plenty and wants to illustrate the, the character of his father, where did he point to? He pointed to nature. Because nature and the creation of nature reveals the identity and the design of God. So when, when the person was worrying of lack, Jesus told that person, look at the birds. They do not work, God feeds them. Look at the lilies. They do nothing, but they are dressed with beautiful flowers. Look at the person beside you. Tell that person, look at the birds. But you might be saying, Brother JB, yung birds, wala naman silang electric bill. Diba? So I'm tempted to look at the bills. God is saying, look at the birds and do not worry. God is not saying, look at the birds and imitate them. Do not work. Just, God is just saying that if I can provide for the birds, why, why can I provide for you? You are more important than a bird. Amen? So at this time, Jesus was pointing to nature again. He was saying that the sunlight shines on both good and evil, the just and the unjust alike, meaning God provides for everything. There is enough supply for everyone. You need not fear even if you have enemies. Because would you agree with me, our general feeling is that bad people should experience bad things. We all want that. Do you agree? Who watched Avengers 1 here? 
the first Avengers movie. You know the, the scene I love very much? Was the scene between Loki and Hulk. I am a god, sabi niya, di ba? And what did Hulk do? He, he brought him up like a rag doll. And I was so happy. Yes, booting asayo, kailangan mo yan. But we want, like, we, want, we want our enemies to suffer something like that. This is our insane logic. When God blesses us, we don't deserve it. He's being generous. But when God blesses others who don't deserve it, He's being unfair. Aminin, naramdaman mo yan, di ba? Amen? But I want to proclaim a truth to you today. God loves every sinner. You and me included. Amen? Can you look at the person beside you? God loves you. Tell that person. So the next time you are in your office and then your most hated colleague comes in and that colleague comes in with a brand new LV bag, Jimmy Choo's, Jimmy Choo na shoes, Jimmy Choo's, di ba? And then me, me tan, she stand and glowing because she had a recent trip in Boracay with this foreigner boyfriend. And she says, good morning, I got promoted. And you know that this person lies, manipulates, claws her way, sumisip-sip sa mga boss. And you say beneath your breath, pambihira naman, Lord. Okay lang naman na naka-LV siya. Okay lang naman na naka-Jimmy naka Choo's. Okay lang naman na nagburakay. Okay lang naman na na-promote. Pero bakit Lord siya may boyfriend? May ex pa nga. Ako wala. Diba? You need to catch yourself. That's scarcity thinking. You're making an enemy. Because you're saying that Lord, she got all the blessings, then there must be none left for me. Like the sashimi I was talking about earlier. But always be reminded that the supply is unlimited. So my question for you today is this. Do you want to break free from a scarcity mindset? Do you want it? Then follow what Jesus is saying. So let's continue. This is God's higher call for us. Sabi don, if you love only those who love you, what reward is there for that? Even corrupt, corrupt tax collectors do that much. If you are kind only to your friends, how are you different from anyone else? Even pagans do that. But you are to be perfect, even when your Father in heaven is perfect. God is calling you to perfection. Can you look at the person beside you? If you're a husband and that's your wife beside you, can you tell that word, perfection? And most of us have a difficult idea of ga- grasping the word perfect and the command here. Even I, when I, I'm reading this, I'm telling God, Lord, I cannot be perfect. You want to know why? Ask me why. I make mistakes. And if you ask the husbands here, they would disagree because they will say, Brother JB, my wife is perfect. She's perfectly beautiful. She's perfectly angelic and kind when she is sleeping. But do not mess with her when she's awake. You will meet the dragon. Perfection is difficult for us because we think that it means not making a mistake. So we don't even try because we know that somewhere along the way we'll make mistakes. But I love it that we're teaching you here that the, the Bible we're reading is an English translation already. It is derived from the original Hebrew and Greek. And if you, you look at the Greek word that was used for per- perfect here, the original Greek word was teleoi or telois. And that means without gap or hole. In another translation, it means complete. So God is not asking you to be perfect by following Him because it's impossible. God is asking you to be whole and complete by following Him. Would you agree with me that you can be complete and whole even if you are making mistakes? Amen. Because that is what Jesus is doing. And that's God's invitation for you. That is why you can actually fail in loving your enemies. But you can try again until you become whole. Amen? Amen. Palakpakan po natin si Lord. So let's go back to, to my buffet analogy and let's learn the, the practical lessons here. The first message of our passage today is this. Are you ready? There is enough for everyone. 
Can you shake, shake, shake the person beside you? Baka nakakatulog na yan. Sabi mo sa kanya, there is enough for you. There is enough for everyone. There was this researcher that did a study in one remote tribe in Africa. So when, when, the, when the anthropologist was already done in the research in that remote area, he wanted to do a farewell game for the kids because he has become close to the kids. So what he did was he bought a basket of fruits. He put a red ribbon on the basket and put the basket under a tree. And then he gathered all the kids in the, in the tribe and asked them, okay, we'll move away from this tree. We'll, we'll, we'll stay here. And when I say go... Everyone runs. The goal is to get to the basket. Whoever gets to the basket first will get everything. Ay, parang pasok na pasok sa Christmas party, di ba? So yung iba, yung mga competitive dyan, na gano'n na handa, I will get that basket. So the, the anthropologist did the counting. One, two, three, go! When the anthropologist said go, the kids did something different. They all held hands, they smiled, and they ran together. So naturally, they arrive at the fruit basket together. So what they did when they arrived at the basket, they sat around it, got a fruit, passed it around, and everybody was happy eating. Wow. Wow. So the anthropologist asked the little girl, so why did you run that way? And they answered this. The girl said, how can one of us be happy if all the others are sad. In their language, it's called Ubuntu. And you know what? Our usual thinking of self is based on Western philosophy. It's, I think, therefore, I am. By Rene Descartes, diba? I think, therefore, I am. What's in it for me? Am I happy? What significance? Those things are not bad per se. Because it's important to know self and discover your gifting, your calling, your happiness. But their, their idea of self was Ubuntu. Can you say that word, Ubuntu? I am because we are. My existence does not matter for myself alone because my existence matters for others. And the first message of the passage today is this, brothers and sisters. Life is about belonging to a community and serving that community. Palakpakan po natin yung mga servants natin here at the feast. Because they make it possible that you attend here every Sunday and you get out so blessed by the Word of God. So God's message in this passage is that you need to hold hands with others when you run towards a goal. And when you reach it, you sit down and eat together. You celebrate. Di ba ang saya na hindi nag-agawan, na hindi nag mentality, nakarating lahat, Dahil nagsama-sama at nagtulong. So God is reminding you today that God's fruit basket is for everyone. It is enough for everyone. Amen? Amen. So are you ready for message number two? So what's message number one? Review? Hola. Hola na. Masyado bang maganda? Lost for words kayo? Diba? Message number one, you have more than enough. Second, you own nothing. The funny thing about scarcity thinking is that it breeds entitlement. Kasi scarcity eh. So feeling mo tuloy, yung bagay na para sa'yo, entitled ka. And I believe it's prevailing in, in Filipino culture. Napansin nyo, pag merong may birthday... Diba? Uy, birthday mo! Treat naman dyan! Blow out naman dyan! Uy, grabe, birthday! Hindi man lang man libre! Diba? That's our usual comment. So some of us are afraid now to even put our exact birthdays on Facebook. I think that it should be different. If it's your birthday, people would come, Oh, it's your birthday. How can we make it easy for you today? What do you want as help? How can we be of service to you today? But you hardly see that. And I, I see it so ingrained in our culture that one time, you know, my, my daughter is three years old and she's already at school. And the teacher asked us to sing a Filipino nursery rhyme at home. So I chose Sit Silit Sit Alibang Bang because I, I think it was just a normal nursery rhyme. But I was shocked with the lyrics. Oh, can you sing with me? Sit Silit Sit Alibang Bang. 
sa laginto, sa lagubang, ang babae sa lansangan, kung gumili parang tandang. What's the next? Santo Nino sa pandakan, puto seko sa tindahan, kung ayaw mong magpautang, uubusin ka ng langgam. When, when the lyrics reach that, and it, it meant, I, I did not know this when I was young, and I, it's the first time I sang it again after a long time. When that lyrics came into mind, and I, I thought about it, I stopped the video. Because I don't want this subconsciously being put on my daughter. That when you are borrowing money, you're entitled to borrow from others. Alam nyo yan. Marami nang nag-away dito dahil sa utang. Di ba yung lumapit sa'yo? Awang-awa ka. Pero nung naninangil ka na, di ba, sin zone ka lang. Tapos makikita mo sa Facebook niya, bagong rebound, di ba? Because people have been entitled to it. People have actually forgotten that everything they have is a gift. Everything is a generosity from the generosity of God's hand. Amen. But that's why you feel entitled. Alam niyan, magkakapatid, nag-aaway sa lupang mamanahin. Because hindi, dapat ako nag-alaga kila mama at papa, dapat akin to. Akin yung may frontage, sa yun na yung likod, likod na lote. Diba, nag-aaway, nag-aagawan. Because you feel you're entitled to everything. I remember one time, even I am not, not, not exempted from this temptation of entitlement. One time, I was entering our condo building. And I think it was a new security guard. And the new security guard started questioning me. Sir, saan kayo? Taga dito ba kayo, sir? And naturally, what did I feel? Uminit yung ulo ko. Eh ba, teka. Unit owner ako. Kakabahid ko lang. Actually, fully paid na ako this year. Yung nasa isip ko. Tapos, sisitahin mo ako. So naturally, I answered him, my unit number, with quite a frown in my face. And I was showing, I was dissatisfied with this questioning. But I, as I was going up the elevator, I was alone. God was speaking to me. Why, are you, why do you feel entitled to be respected by Him? And I said, Oh nga no Lord, bakit nga ba? Kasi na- natamaan yung ego ko, feeling ko scars. Hindi na ba ako kilala? Nasaktan ako. And I was reflecting deeper. God was revealing to me, didn't you know that He's just doing His job? And it dawned on me. Oh, nga, no? Lord, gusto ko yon. That if some unfamiliar face is here, the security guard is strict. Because that means that it's safer for me and my family here. So if you rid yourself of your entitlement and scarcity mindset, you, began, you begin to see the workings of God and His generosity. Do you agree? So my question for you is this. Are your possessions, titles, and achievements teaching you to be entitled? Ah, ako yung director. Dapat ganit. Dapat may parking ako. Ganyan. Ah, ako yung ganito. Dapat pagdating ko, templado na yung kape. I'm not saying that people must not serve you if you are a leader. That, that's part of it. But when you are becoming demanding and entitled for it, you might be losing vision and view of how God's generosity is working in your life. Amen? Can you look at the person beside you and smile at that person? Uy, magbabago na yan. Sabihan mo siya. The third message is this. Are you ready? In this passage, God is asking you, again, the question, do you trust my generosity? Can you answer? Do you trust God's generosity? Yes. yes. I believe everyone's, that is everyone's top of mind answer. Diba? Pagka, Pagka normal at alam naman natin, yes, yes talaga ang sagot diretso. But, but the question is, if you really trust God, you will stop scheming, hoarding, and fighting. And you start giving with generosity. So when the going gets tough, when challenges come in your life, that's when your real answer comes out. And I thought, when I was reflecting about this passage about enemies na hindi ko siya masyado kailangan. Dahil I've been serving God since I was in college. So naturally, I, I'm, I'm kind of patient with people. I'm quite tolerant. I'm understanding. I'm compassionate. But all of that changed when I learned how to drive. Because guys, road rage is real. Do you agree? Sometimes there are situations when I'm driving that I'm tempted to curse. 
I wanted to, to shout at that person. I want to, to pursue the person. I want to get revenge. I want to become a vegetable. Itanong nyo sa akin, bakit vegetable? Patola. Gusto kong pumatol. And I remember one particular time, I was bringing my wife to work. It was a relaxing Sunday drive. And we were there. I was in my lane. We were listening to worship music. We were conversing in the car. And then suddenly, out of nowhere, this bus comes cutting me off. So the worship music background disappeared. My head was filled with rage. I pursued the bus. You know what I did? I pursued the bus. And after a minute, I was in front of the bus. And you know what I did? Ask me what? I stopped in front of the bus for a good one to two minutes, smiling, doing like this. <laughs> Revenge is sweet. So juicy sweet, I was telling myself. And my wife was, was already getting my attention. Sabi niya, babe, 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 stop that. Preacher ka. Sabi ko sa kanya, walang preacher, preacher. Justicia. And then when, when suddenly my, my anger is already setting down, I realize how wrong of a thing I did. Oh my God, I'm a preacher. I believe that's why even Master Yoda, you know Master Yoda, Star Wars fans, said this. He said that fear is the path of the dark side. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. My fear that justice will not be served allowed me to have this scarcity thinking that I'm entitled to bring justice in this situation. And I took matters in my own hand. And that's what happened. So after that, I was saying sorry to God and telling God, Lord, so ano bang dapat gawin? Ano bang mas tamang gawin? Pwede ba nang ginawa ko na lang, hinabol ko pa rin siya, huminto ako sa harap niya, tapos bumaba ako, lumapit ako sa driver, nakangiti, and I said, bro, can I invite you for a coffee date? Let's talk about God. It will not happen because naturally I already interrupted and caused harm to the person already. So God was telling me that in that situation, you cannot do anything, but it doesn't mean that it's unfair. It doesn't mean that it's scarce. If you, if you love yourself, I also love that person. And that person is also my child. I can find ways for that person to change. Just pray for that person. And it changed my mindset. Who among you here are experiencing road rage once in a while? Can you tell that person, if that person raises his hand, sabi mo sa kanya, magbago na tayo. Chill, chill lang. Diba? Wag mo nang ilagay ang hostisya sa iyong mga kamay. Kasi baka mapasama pa. And I believe that when you realize that generosity of God, you will be compelled to do what is right. Just like what Zacchaeus did in Luke chapter 19. Di ba nung nakita niya si Jesus, Zacchaeus was known to be a tax collector who is corrupt. But he, when he experienced the true goodness and the abundance of God, he said this, Luke chapter 19 verse 8. Anong sinabi niya? I will give half my wealth to the poor. And if I have cheated people on their taxes, I will give them back four times as much. Nahiya siya sa kabutihan ng Diyos. Because God is telling you that abundance enough for yourself and for others. So you need to love your neighbors as yourself. Can you look at the person beside you? Sabi mo sa kanya, love yourself. Sabi mo sa kanya, love me. Kasi para naman akong others sa'yo, di ba? Yan, may hugot. Di ba? And th those others include your enemy. But here is my question. After that road rage incident, so I began to be more courteous and polite and kind. Even when, because I have another enemy when I'm driving. You know, you know who they are? Ask me who. The traffic enforcers. Because some of them are scheming. Some of them want to extort money from you. I'm already old enough to determine their, their, their agendas. So one time, I experienced that, and an, an enforcer called me out and just, uh, just said, uh, if I had a violation, just issue me a ticket. I just said, sir, it's okay. And you know what the enforcer did? He found the most expensive violation and made that as my ticket. Because I told him, hindi po ako maglalagay. Pero kung kailangan po akong tikitan, tikitan niyo ako. 
So I ended up paying much and being disturbed in my time because I had to go to the city hall. So I was praying to God, Lord, what do you do when people who are scheming to take advantage of you, what do you actually do? Is this, is this the right way to love them? I think not because I, I ended up being abused like that. So what's the proper thing to do? So another situation came just about three months ago in between the intersection of Quirino and Adriatico. You know that? Before you go here to Ross Boulevard. So the leftmost lane is for the vehicles who are turning left. And since I'm going to PICC, I'm going straight. I don't know why it always happens that an enforcer magically pops out when it's Sunday and, about, and I'm about to preach. Maybe it's the enemy. <laughs> so naturally, I was on the left lane because I was preoccupied rehearsing my talk. So I forgot about it. So I went straight. And out of nowhere, an enforcer came out with his friends. Three enforcers ganging up on me. And as clear as day, I can tell their intention. They want to extort money. But I was praying to God, Lord, how do I properly love these enemies without also sacrificing myself in a way that they can abuse me? Lord, I need your guidance. I pray for them. I pray also for me. So my first instinct was to, I feel it's God's leading, to respect their authority. So when I opened their window, I addressed them, Sir, I'm sorry, I know it's a left-only lane. I was preoccupied. And they asked for my license. I gave my license. And for a good two minutes, what they were telling me is this, Sir, so ano mangyayari dito? Sir, so ano ang gagawin natin? They were going around in circles. And I know where it was leading. They were waiting for me to offer. That, hey, sir, here, uh, here's 500. Have breakfast at McDo. Thank you. But I know I cannot do that. I will preach. So you know what I did? I offered something better. I told them, Pasensya na po kayo. Gustuhin ko mang magbigay, hindi po pwede. Preacher po ako. Hinugot ko na yun. Sana ma- makonsensya naman sila. Di ba? Pero ito po, if you have prayer intentions, I would really love to pray for you. Pray for your enemies the way, di ba? You know what happened? Suddenly, they all stepped back and they were like surprised and told me, Sir, hindi kami nang hihingi, ah. Sir, hindi kami nang hihingi. Sir, hindi kami nang hihingi. And I felt God was saving me from that situation. Wow! This is the way to deal with your enemies. Treat them with respect and love. But also establish your boundaries so that you could love yourself and believe that God is there in the situation. That, that incident ended up them waving and saying, Bye! by father <laughs> and I was happy because I was probably it was a moment for them to realize that God is watching them and what they're doing and they were not judged with what I did I did not battle them with debate because I also know the specific law that says that serving is not a violation unless you abruptly interrupt and interfere with others I can claw my way in using that but God led me to do what is right by loving my enemies And I believe He is inviting you today to do the same. Maybe you're tired of fighting your battles because it shouldn't be a battle in the first place. Maybe you're tired of saying, Lord, dati kasi inagawa nila ako eh. Eh, Hindi na pwede. Ngayon gagawa ako ng paraan para hindi na ganito. Talo-talo na. But God is revealing to you today that there's a better way. There's a better way that involves loving others, praying for them. There's a better way that involves also protecting and preserving the love you have for yourself. And it can only be done with Jesus. That's why whenever you're, you feel that you're discouraged with what's been happening, always look at Jesus on the cross. Because His death shows us. In Jesus' death, God reveals His boundless generosity. I will give this much for you so that you can enjoy life.
with my full trust and my full love. And I believe you will bless me more so I can give more. In Jesus' name, Amen. It is so beautiful to be in the presence of God. And can we pray right now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit? I want you just to lift up to Him all your needs. Whatever you're going through, He knows what you're going through. He knows where you're coming from. He knows the burdens of your heart. Just, just bring it up to God and say, Lord, I surrender everything that all hurt and all pain and all worries and all fear. Lift them all up to you, Lord. I surrender them to you. You are my king and you are the center of my life. And I trust you and I know that you are blessing me right now. I receive your love. I receive your joy. I receive your peace. I receive your healing. I receive your provision in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me today. Live a fantastic life.